Hey everyone, in this video I will tell you about the properties of enamel. So let's start with an introduction to the enamel. The first question that you may be asked about enamel is what is enamel? Enamel simply means a protective layer. It protects the underlying dentine. It is the hardest tissue in human body and this is because it has maximum mineral content of any mineralized tissue and it is about 96%. Enamel is the only ectodermal derivative of all dental tissues. Rest dental tissues like dentine, cementum, pulp and periodontal ligament are ectomesenchymal derivative. So enamel is the only ectodermal derivative. The formative cell of enamel is ameloblasts and the process of enamel formation is called amylogenesis. For more detail on amylogenesis, please watch my video on amylogenesis. Enamel is a unique tissue as it lacks vascular supply, it lacks formative cells once it is completely formed and it also lacks innervation. So enamel is essentially non-vital. Let's now begin with mechanical properties. Enamel has high abrasion resistance so that the wear of enamel in function is slow and that is why enamel remains in function for such a long period of time without deteriorating too much. Enamel has low tensile strength that is about 46 megapascal. Because of this, enamel may fracture under lateral or tensile forces. So we can say that enamel is brittle. Enamel has a high modulus of elasticity, about 131 gigapascals. And so we can say that enamel has high stiffness. Enamel is also the hardest human tissue. It has a hardness of about 296 KHN. Enamel has a specific gravity that is a density of about 2.8 to 2.9. So we can say the density of enamel is about 3 times that of water. Its compressive strength is high, about 76 megapascals. So enamel is strong under vertical forces that is under occlusal load but it is weak under lateral or shear or tensile forces. Hardness or strength of enamel decreases from surface towards dentino enamel junction. It also decreases from cusp or incisal edge towards cemento enamel junction or cervical margin. Let's now go to the physical properties. Enamel covers the crown portion of the tooth and it has variable thickness in permanent teeth. The thickness is about 2.5 mm at incisal edges and occlusal surfaces, about 1 to 1.3 mm on lateral surfaces and as we go towards cemento enamel junction or the cervical margin, the thickness reduces to 0.7 mm or you may say that it becomes knife edge. The primary teeth have a uniform thickness of about 1 to 1.3 mm. The enamel is thicker on the supporting or the functional cusps. In maxillary molars, the lingual cusps are supporting and in mandibular molars, the buccal cusps are supporting. As I have already explained, enamel is brittle as it has low tensile strength. Enamel behaves like a semi-permeable membrane. It is porous and it has a pore density of about 5%. So what it means is that of the total volume of enamel, about 5% is formed by porosities. So in a newly erupted tooth, the pore density is 5%. And small molecules like fluoride can pass through these porosities easily. With age, the enamel becomes more mineralized and the pore density or the pore volume decreases. Let's now go to the optical properties. Enamel is a birefringent material. It means that it has two refractive indices. So, 
when a light ray is incident on enamel it is split into two rays and because of this its color may vary from cuspal or incisal edge to the cervical margin enamel is a translucent material with an average refractive index of about 1.62 the translucency of enamel depends on some factors like degree of mineralization as the mineralization increases enamel becomes more and more translucent so when enamel is less mineralized it is more opaque or less translucent and when enamel is highly mineralized it becomes more translucent so with increasing translucency or increasing mineralization the tooth appear more yellowish because more of dentin is seen from the translucent enamel enamel in a newly erupted tooth is less mineralized also in primary teeth enamel is less mineralized than the permanent tooth and this is the reason a newly erupted permanent tooth and a primary tooth are whiter as compared to a old permanent tooth translucency also depends on the light the enamel is exposed to as the wavelength of light decreases that is as it moves towards blue enamel appears more opaque while in red light it appears more translucent translucency is also affected by hydration a dehydrated enamel appears more opaque and upon rehydration enamel again appears translucent the color of enamel in permanent may be described as yellowish white to grayish white so if the enamel is less mineralized as in case of a young tooth it would be more opaque so the color would be more grayish white but with age as it becomes more translucent the color would become more yellowish white in primary it can be described as china white next property is fluorescence enamel absorbs light in the uv region and it emits light in the blue region so it absorbs light of high intensity or high energy and emits a light of low energy so when enamel is exposed to uv light it appears blue let's now go to the chemical properties let me first describe the composition of enamel by weight enamel is composed of 96% inorganic material 1% organic material and about 3% water by volume enamel is composed of about 86 to 90% inorganic 4% organic and 6 to 10% water first i will tell you about the inorganic component of enamel the inorganic crystals of enamel is called hydroxyapatite its chemical formula is ca10 po4 whole 6 oh2 this formula may be halved and be written as ca5 po4 whole 3 oh it may also be written as 3 ca3 po4 whole twice caoh twice so these are the three different forms in which the chemical formula of hydroxyapatite may be written The hydroxyapatite crystal is hexagonal in shape. In its core is the hydroxyl ion which is surrounded by three atoms of calcium. These are then surrounded by three phosphate molecules and finally at the periphery we again have calcium. The calcium in the outer circle or at the periphery are shared by three adjacent crystals. So one crystal gets only one third of each calcium in the outer ring or the outer circle so in total we have five calcium three inner calcium and two outer periphery calciums so in total we have five calcium three phosphate and one hydroxyl ion so in one crystal thus the formula becomes ca5po4 whole 3 oh when the crystal is newly formed it also may contain some impurities like carbonate and magnesium carbonate usually substitutes phosphate so in about 90% cases it would substitute phosphate but rarely it may also substitute hydroxyl ion so in about 10% cases it may substitute hydroxyl ion 
magnesium is positively charged and it would substitute calcium. Both these substitutions that is carbonate and magnesium weaken the crystal and make them more acid susceptible or acid soluble. As I already said, these impurities are more in newly formed crystals but as the crystal grows or it matures, the impurities decrease in concentration. So, they are more towards the DEJ or they are more towards the core of the crystal and they are less towards the periphery of the crystal or they are less towards the surface of the enamel. Another common substitution is fluoride. Fluoride substitution is beneficial as it increases acid resistance and the concentration of fluoride is more towards the surface of the enamel as we apply fluoride externally. So, the concentration of fluoride would be more on the surface but as we move towards DEJ, its concentration decreases. Now, as I just told you, impurities are more concentrated towards the core. The core is more acid soluble or weak. And the periphery is acid resistant, that is, it is more stable. Let's look at the arrangement of hydroxyapatite crystals. There is a gap of less than 5 nanometers between adjacent crystals, and this gap contains water and organic matrix. The hydroxyapatite crystals in enamel follow a specific arrangement, and this arrangement is described as enamel rod. The enamel rods are the structural and functional unit of enamel and we will discuss about enamel rods in more detail in our next video on enamel. The next component I would like to tell you about is water. It constitutes about 3 to 4 percent of enamel by weight and about 6 to 10 percent of enamel by volume. Water is mainly responsible for the porosities of enamel. With age, the amount of water decreases and mineralization increases, so the porosities reduce upon aging. Like I already told you, ions like fluoride easily travel through water. Water in enamel is found in three locations. First, between crystals surrounding organic material. Second, it is found in the defects within the hydroxyapatite crystals. And third, as hydration layer surrounding the hydroxyapatite crystal. So, these are the three locations where water is found in enamel. Lastly, the organic component of enamel. It constitutes about 1% of enamel by weight and about 4% of enamel by volume. The concentration of organic component varies within enamel. At locations where hydroxyapatite crystals are regularly arranged, the concentration of organic component is as low as 0.05%. But in locations where hydroxyapatite crystals are more irregularly arranged, the concentration of organic component is as high as 3%. The organic portion is mainly enamel proteins. And of these proteins, amylogenin forms about 10% and non-amylogenins about 90% of the organic matrix. The non-amylogenins are a group of proteins like amyloblastin, tuftalin and enamelin. For more detail on enamel proteins, do watch my video on amylogenesis. So, uh, that's all for now. I hope this video was helpful. If you do like the video, please like, comment and share this video. Thank you.